welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again for a bit of a re-retro Shiz look back at the past, because I went to Macy's, oddly enough, and found the entirety of the new Marvel Legends retro-carded Spider-Man quote-unquote the animated series line, kinda, sorta, not really, we have lots to talk about though on that avenue, mixed with some newer comic book characters like... Spider Shot here, who actually is called Assassin Spider Man, but I think Spider Shot definitely works better for him. Gives him a little bit more life, a little bit more character. Now, this particular Spider Man is an alternate universe Spider Man, specifically a branch off of when Spider Man was when Wolverine in Russia and punched a woman to death. <laughs> Here's the barcode. Not only are these hitting Macy's. But they are hitting Target store shelves now as well. Soon to be followed up by, I'm assuming, Walmart. Online should be shipping. You get the idea. And of course, next up, we have yet another Spider-Man. This time being Last Stand Spider-Man, which could be a future for our 616 Spider-Man. Kind of, sort of. Remains to be seen. 616 sees this guy in a premonition, a, a nod to the future of what may happen as this... Last Stand Spider-Man's name suggests, yes, he takes on the NYPD and basically gets his butt handed to him. I'm sure he's shown up in Spider-Verse as well. But a relatively newcomer in the sense of Hollow's Eve, why that's always welcome for the Marvel Legends line. Now, her persona, her human persona, we'll say, uh, has been around in the comics for quite some time, but it's Hollow's Eve. She's in the more modern recent storyline with Ben Riley and the Beyond Corporation. She really does have a unique ability, one that's really interesting, as you can tell by her accessories, but I would wager to say Hobgoblin may have something to say about her costume choice or whichever Hobgoblin you want to mention, but she is a cool looking character. Now, over on the Quote unquote, Spider Man the Animated Series venue. We have three characters, of which one of them basically appeared, one of them appeared in a different form, and one of them was slated to appear. So, like I said, we got slots to talk about. Tombstone, Lonnie Lincoln. That is a really good looking action figure. I'm just going to tell you right now if you see this guy on store shelves and you're a Spider Man fan, grab him. Now, on the back side, it does perfectly recreate the old Spider-Man Toy Biz figures, and of course that comes courtesy of Harry Moore Design. Please check him out on Instagram. He does fantastic work. Always nails these retro-inspired packaging, along with the Jack-O-Lantern. Now, we have gotten Jack-O-Lantern figures in the past, and you will see lots of Jack-O-Lantern figures in this video, but we've never gotten this design, and this is the classic Jason Philip Mackendale design, well, before he became Hobgoblin. And again, the artwork on the back, all the Ikea instructions, that is cool, and I'm just gonna tell you now, save you some time, he's my fave of the wave. Here's the barcode if you wanna head out and find old Jack. Now, the one and only character that's technically appeared on Spider-Man the Animated Series in this costume without any, well, this or this or this is different, Scarlet Spider. And yes, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're a fan of Scarlet Spider, you're gonna want this figure because when I compare this Scarlet Spider to the prior release Scarlet Spider, you're gonna laugh. <laughs> I know I did, and that makes me sad, because I really like that figure, but whew, we have a definite upgrade here, that's for sure. Here's the barcode for old Ben Riley. But in the meantime, this is gonna be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee, check those bank statements in case you wanna head out and grab these roughly $167 and change you're looking at. I did get them from Macy's, they're gonna be the same price everywhere, in fact, Thank you to the Macy's employee who helped me grab these. That was very nice. And then a shout out to the other lady, the cashier, who promptly asked me if I needed a gift receipt for these action figures, of which she gave me the oddest look when I responded that, no, these are for me. <laughs> We talked about Ninja Turtles too. She was really cool. Anyways, this is a look at the brand new Hasbro Marvel Legends, the retro-inspired Spider-Man, kind of, sort of, the animated series line. Here we go. And while I got all you Spider-Man, the animated series is returning hopefuls here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids and 
you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. We got old toys, we got new toys, we got daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Like Marvel, which is fun again right now because of X-Men the Animated Series. But here is Assassin Spider-Man, Spider Shots. There's not gonna be anything too crazy to talk about with most of these figures. Just keep that in mind. You're gonna get the usual hands, which he's got web weapon, he's got punching hands, he has no item holding hands that you could really use for an assassin Spider-Man. You know what I'm talking about? The fisted hands and the web weapon, that would have been nice to be able to put his spider shot somewhere on those. Some webbing, like it shows on the box, would have been cool. Like, that would have been awesome. Because he only comes with these two prior release blast effects, which, yes, it does work, but at the same time, more is always appreciated. And with Spider Shot Spider-Man, I think that that head portrait is killer. No pun intended. I think that, that perfectly encapsulates what you see on the page. Looks like a Spider-Man you don't want to mess with. It's going to be, again, largely a body we've seen before. They have some new add-on pieces like his belt pockets right there, which would make a life field blush. He's got his little extendo fingers that it's in the shape of a gun. As you can see, you're going to slip those blast effects in there, so it kind of looks like he's blasting a gun, which, yes, it does work. Could it have been done a little bit better? That's what I'd like to have seen. Yes, as you can see in this comic book panel, that's exactly what you're getting. However, the way they fit in, the way they're kind of angled, it's not always great. It's just okay, right? I expected just a little bit more. You're gonna get the ab crunch, you get the legs across the board. And this is something I haven't had to say about Marvel Legends in a very long time, but perhaps heat these up, especially in the knees. And that goes for every single character. It's just something I noticed that the knees are incredibly hard to bend. So you don't want to break anything, snap anything, just go easy on the knees. And in putting out his spider shot blasts, like I said, they're effective, but they could have been done just a little bit better. Now, if you're wondering, who do I team this guy up with? Wolverine in the brown suit, that's not a bad choice. Black Widow, that's not a bad choice. Ultimately, he meets his end during one of the Moreland crossover events, Spider, whatever, it's <laughs> too many Spider-Man. But give him a flight stand, get him in a cool pose, get him spider shot and it's not a bad figure, it's not a great figure, it's just another Spider-Man in a different costume. So. Moving on to another Spider-Man in another costume, we of course have the Last Stand Spider-Man. And I remember reading this issue and I thought that's a really cool costume. And I like what they've done with the hands here. This is the only accessory you get. They did paint the black on the underside of the outstretched hands and of course his fisted hands. It's very simplistic. It doesn't have web lines. It's not meant to have any of that. But for what is there, the detail, all the little folds of his jacket, they're really nicely captured. A good wash, of course, they don't do that, but really would bring this out to make that that much better. I like that you can see his boots underneath his pants. He's pulled them down over that. That is kind of cool to see. I totally dig that. The head is going to be separate from the neck, so you get two points of articulation there. The arms, the bicep, the double joints, there again, is nothing too crazy in terms of a Marvel Legends figure. He doesn't have the usual ab crunch, which I'm glad because I think that would break up the sculpt way too much. He's got a sculpted belt underneath, the waist. You get the idea. Lots of momentum, a lot of movement for this character, even though in the comics, let's just say, he just kind of fights a bunch of cops. Now, like I said, if he's appeared in the Spider-Verse, across Spider-Verse, all that jazz, comic books and movies, it's just another Spider-Man, but it is well done for what it is. It just leaves a little bit to be desired, right? Now, like I said, the 616 Spider-Man sees this as a potential future. So this is kind of like old man Spider-Man. And this is pretty much the last you see of him, just kind of getting beaten up by the cops. Webbing, it doesn't have it in the comics as far as the issue that I read, so it's not really something I would say give it to him, although, a Spider-Man without webbing is just so weird, and I've said that over and over, much like X-Men. Give them powers, give them the abilities to bring them to life. And just to kind of show you the scaling amidst, we'll say 616, you got the futuristic last stand, and then you have spider shots. Let me know what you think. Are Marvel Legends getting taller? Because it really feels like with these newer figures, they definitely are getting 
taller. Now, moving on to Hallow's Eve. This is a cool action figure because it's just a really cool design. I can't say that her backstory with having haunted masks and all that is like, wow, that's amazing, but at least it's interesting, let's say the least. She comes with a bunch of extra hands, which are hands we've all seen before, but the real highlights are her masks. Like I said, she gets her powers, her abilities, from a bag full of haunted, possessed masks, which she can then use to take on their abilities. Each mask has a different ability. You got two here, you got devil and vampire, and they kind of sort of clip on. It's not something that's gonna stay. You kind of have to fit it around her hood, her hair, that kind of thing. The vampire mask fits a lot better. The devil one doesn't stay at all. The horns get in the way. It's cumbersome to put in there. Yes, you can pose her out with them, but it takes a little bit of work. But I would say handheld works the best. Although it is kind of an odd choice not to have these clip on in some way, some form. Now with the actual figure, old Janine here hooks up with Ben Riley, and it becomes Hallow's Eve because of Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen, which, hey, all those figures have been coming out, so that's a nice little melding, right? Yeah, waiting too long for certain characters. She's well done. It's a typical female body we have seen. She's all pinless. That's nice. You can take her hood off. You can see her orange hair, which doesn't really differentiate from the actual orange hood. You can take everything off. I find it weird that she has those purple straps because she has the purple bag, but then the straps, that's just an odd choice. That's how it goes. The hood keeps everything on, just FYI. The legs, again, as I'll say, go really easy with the knees. But again, as much as it's a new character, which is always appreciated, in terms of capturing the character, she has her powers, quote unquote, with the masks. That is nice to see. Now, pairing her up with Ben Riley, Chasm, as he has become in the comics, and then Madeline Pryor, which gave her her whole bag of mystical masks. There you go. That all looks pretty cool. And again, nice to have all these characters out in one go. And like I said, Hobgoblin <laughs> to now Hallow's Eve and Spider-Man, you can see how all these match up. She is kind of sort of Hobgoblin when you look at it up close. Yes, she does differentiate. But in totality, with the masks, with the look, with the whole, this is a new character, she looks pretty cool. Yes, she's definitely a welcome addition to your Marvel Legends collection. Now, moving into Spider-Man the Animated Series, kinda, sorta, we have Tombstone. And let me just tell you, he is a real standout from this wave. Now, this design of Tombstone is very 80s-ish, kinda 70s, 80s-ish, and I like that. I think that that's a really cool look. In the Animated Series, he looked like this. Totally would love to see that in the retro collection. Marvel Legends make that happen. He is a little bit more spectacular Spider-Man, that's for sure, and kind of sort of nod to the Spider-Verse movies, which kind of encapsulates everything minus Spider-Man the Animated Series, but hey, I'm not complaining because this is a really cool looking figure. Now, he does come with some extra hands. You got fisted hands that are done well. You have a crowbar. No guns, no weapons other than a crowbar. That totally works. He has a hand to have the crowbar and it does hold it rather well. It's a little bit loose in the grip, but you can definitely make it work, especially when battling Spider-Man. The extra head portraits. The head portraits in general, the sculpts on these are friggin' fantastic. That is the artwork brought to life, and I love it. Bravo, that is one of the coolest looking head portraits I've seen in a while, along with this one. I mean, across the board, from the head portraits, to the suit, to the blue pinstripes, to the pocket square, I mean, you can see the difference between the two head portraits. That is awesome. That's a great set of head portraits, and just the suit in general. Brand new figure, you've got the shoes, the pants, jet black figure, all the wrinkles, but it works and it still looks like a well-proportioned tombstone in a suit, we'll just say that. The head, the arms, the hands, plenty of mobility, plenty for a guy in a suit, we'll just say, and again, yeah, go easy on the knees. <laughs> in fact, I will tell you this, the tombstone one seemed to work out a lot better than these. He was a lot more uh, malleable, we'll just say. But uh, I always just say, go easy on him. No ab crunch. He's got the waist. And then 
in the elbows, double jointed, the wrists, you have the hand with the trigger finger if you have a gun, which if you've been collecting long enough, I'm sure you can make something happen. So I'm glad that he has that because Tombstone with a gun, that's that's a given, right? And like I said, just the overall black to the blue, the pinstripes, and then the white of his skin really makes for a very intriguing looking figure. In terms of the head portrait, it's not a separate piece. The neck is all in one go. So it's kind of like the recent McFarlane Batmans. You're not gonna get a whole heck of a lot of articulation, but the sculpts more than make up for it. That looks awesome. And like I said, Marvel Legends are getting bigger. You have the suited Hammerhead to now the suited Tombstone to the animated Spider-Man. And yes, Tombstone should definitely be a bigger figure, which works in the scaling, but I'm just saying, it's it's looking like they're going a whole new route with some of these. Now, moving on to my fave of the way, Jack-O-Lantern, Jason Philip McIndale, to be precise. We have some extra hands for him. They are fisted hands, gloved fisted hands. That's cool. His hover disc, kind of like a green goblins, hobgoblins, flying wing. Well, he's got a flying top. <laughs> it's got two pegs on top, which go very easy with those. We all know how those work. You don't want them topping over and then taking them out by being plugged into the figure's feet. The bottom, well done. This comes off, which is a nice touch. That way that you can stabilize the figure. And that is something I really appreciate. You can really pose this guy out fantastically on your shelf. I absolutely love the way that that looks. Bravo, well done. Now, in terms of the spinny top rotating disc platform, there's not really any paint, but you will see some marbleization. I know in the past we've talked about this. It's not really something that bugs me much anymore. It kind of gives a little bit of life to this because otherwise it's just this color of a floating platform. Jack-o'-lantern himself, there's a reason why I says this is my fave of the wave. Also, I just like Jack-o'-lantern. I think that's a really interesting character. The flames, the fire, everything on his flaming pumpkin head is painted beautifully. The eyes, the mouth, everything looks good. You get a little gapage underneath, and it does a good job of not getting in the way of his little scarf hoodie around his neck. Everything from the scales to the paint, pinless joints, peg holes on the bottom, of course, for his floating platform, Everything just looks stellar. And for that alone, again, they did a really bang up job with this, except for in the terms of the pumpkin bombs or just the bombs in general. You can see that's all one piece. They're all stuck together. And then on this side, the back two are one piece. That's all stuck together. And it's kind of a bummer because I thought all of them would come off of his belt, which only one does, which means you'll only have to lose one but at the same time, how cool would it have been to have six bombs come off? If you have a prior release, Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, Demogoblin, all the different goblins, yes, you can give him more of a traditional pumpkin bomb, which he has been known to have as well. But I do rather like that this fits onto his belt. It's weapon storage. It just looks cool, and it keeps in true fashion of what we know about the characters. So for that alone, with the flying hovercraft, with everything that this figure entails, with all the different hands, you nailed it. That is awesome. Now, how does this line up with Spider-Man the Animated Series, you say? Well, there's a couple interesting things here, namely in the sense of the Spider-Man animated video game for Genesis and Super Nintendo. He was a character that showed up in the video game. However, if Spider-Man the Animated Series would have continued, allegedly he would have shown up in later scripts for the animated show. As you can clearly see on the back of the Genesis box, there's old Jack-O-Lantern right there next to the lizard. I love it. It's a different costume. And also, you're using old fashioned video game graphics, just FYI, so it could be the right costume, but in terms of the coloring, it's a little bit off. But in sense of it's Jack-O-Lantern, it's definitely Jack-O-Lantern because in the instruction booklet for said Genesis game, you can read up on the military trained master of martial arts that turned himself into a human pumpkin man, a regular Samhain, if you will. So in that sense, that's pretty cool. And being that this is Jason Philip Mackendale, and in terms of Spider-Man the Animated Series, and as the show continued, we learned that the Hobgoblin is Jason Philip Mackendale. And if Jack-O-Lantern was slated to return, perhaps this would have been Jason Philip Mackendale's 
new persona. Who knows? A little reverse action. But what's really cool is if you want to go the comic book route, if you have Machine Man, if you have Captain America, to a certain extent, if you have Punisher, and of course, Spider-Man, yeah, you can definitely have fun. And like I said, Marvel Legends are definitely getting bigger because these old ones are starting to look very small next to these new releases. But I digress. When was the last time you saw old Machine Man? Now, in terms of prior release Jack-O-Lanterns, which this one kind of maybe more resembles the one from the Genesis video game, and then you have Mad Jack, so it's Jack-O-Lantern, Mad Jack, there's been a ton. There's ones where he's just not a guy in a suit anymore, he's more of a demonic entity. You get the idea. One's been killed by the Punisher, Ghost Riders fought this guy. He's awesome. And with this new one, which is the old original costume, it's the best one yet, but across the board, I'm just a big fan of jack-o'-lantern. They all look great together. And if you were wondering, yes, my old jack-o'-lantern still lights up, which is A-OK -okay awesome. And also throws the pumpkin bombs and well, you get the idea. So to reiterate, yes, as my fave of the wave in terms of being a total figure, I'll never need another jack-o'-lantern until the next jack-o'-lantern, they nailed it. I love the hoverboard. I love the pumpkin bomb. I really wish they were all removable, but at the same time, it's just a great, well-painted jack-o'-lantern figure. Which finally leaves us with the Scarlet Spider. And I'll tell you right now, this is a great new addition to the whole Spider-Man Marvel Legends lineup. And it has been quite some time where we've had a new Ben Riley Scarlet Spider, at least from Hasbro Marvel Legends. They did do a retro-inspired one with a head portraits, which I'll get into in just a few, but he comes with a bunch of different hands, which, hey, that's great. Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider, awesome. Just, they did a great job. The colors are bright and crisp. He just looks a lot better proportioned. I really like what they did with his spider hoodie. I wish the hoodie went up. That would've been kind of cool to kind of implement that, although he never really puts it up. The strings on his sweatshirt are all painted white now. That's nice to see. The belt is beautiful. Well sculpted, the spider applied perfectly. He has his little ankle monitors right here, which look great. They even painted the buckles and the clasp. You're blowing my mind, Hasbro, I can't believe it. And then you have his Scarlet Spider web shooters around his wrist. Now, how cool would that have been to have some impact webbing accessory. Let's see more of that. Again, as I've said in prior Marvel Legend videos, to ad nauseum, it's great when you have hands and head portraits and everything else, but when you don't have the powers that bring these characters to life on your shelves, it doesn't have any personality, nothing to it. Yes, you can pose the heck out of all the Spider-Man figures, but if you don't have webbing, it's just weird. And Speaking of accessories, you have a Ben Riley head portrait. Unmask. He's in Spider-Man the Animated Series, and you didn't put it in the box. And once again, I don't have it. <laughs> now, like I said, to look at the prior released Scarlet Spider, at least the most recent one, right? Not counting the Toy Biz days, to this new one, he's a lot more spindly, a lot more Jack Skellington, a lot more thin, like he needs a sandwich, whereas this Scarlet Spider is indeed a lot better proportion, a lot better sculpted, but it's with our new technology. It's been years, it better look like this at this point. It's a solid home run for a Scarlet Spider. And then again, in terms of Spider-Man the Animated Series, with Madam Web calling upon all the Spider-Mens and John Sipper Jr. officially creating the Spider-Verse, Yes, he did, and I would love to see him return now on a Spider-Man animated sequel because X-Men the Animated Series is rocking it, but you have all these different Spider-Mans of different various worlds, and it is pretty cool. So, that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Hasbro Marvel Legends retro Spider-Man kind of the animated series lineup. Again, it's a bit of a mixed wave in terms of you must have them, right? It's very much a Toy Biz wave for back in the day. You have some obscure Spider-Mans, you have some mainline Spider-Mans, and then you got some cool villains. And for that alone, I appreciate it. And they really did do a great job in terms of these new characters. Pinless joints, the paint is great, the sculpts are great. The character choices, of course, that'll differentiate between person to person. However, I can safely tell you that Jack-O-Lantern, Tombstone, Scarlet Spider-Man, and of course, Hallow's Eve, I would say are all must-gets. The other two Spider-Man, maybe later. Maybe something for a clearance, but 
If you do get them now, you won't be disappointed. So you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Spider-Man. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, get some great food, but most importantly, remember how awesome is X-Men 97 so far. It's really brought me back to Marvel. Man, it's been a while and I'm having a blast again. And I hope you are too. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.